Hello, Les from Thailand here and today's video is going to be about the nitty gritty about buying a house but not buying a house in the normal way. If you've seen my other video about I bought a house in Thailand that was the part one of my buying a house. Now I'm age 61 so with regard to being able to get a mortgage the options for me are limited because I'm a foreigner, I live in Thailand, buying houses so this isn't the normal route now this way of buying a house isn't for everybody i'll go through the reasons as to why i chose this method as opposed to any other methods that are available so i'm going to refer to some notes here because the nitty gritty there's lots of calculations to do it now first of all i've got to say that thank you very much for all the comments on the the video that i put up with regard to buying houses now we've seen many houses and i featured three of the houses that we've seen on the last video so take a look at this video and it'll go into more detail with regard to having a look around the houses. Now this video concentrates on the nitty gritty with regard to the money and the, the ways and means on how you can get this. So I'm going to give you the details on two of the houses that we actually got the details for. The third house that we, we didn't actually inquire to it because we felt that that house wasn't for us and I'll go through the reasons as to why we chose the house that we did. So first of all we're going to go to this house here. Now this is at Ban Chang on a big housing estate over 400 houses on this estate. Now while I'm going through these prices I'm going to do it at today's exchange rate. Now exchange rates go up and down so I'm sort of going to round the figures up so it's round about the prices that I'm going to be saying and I'm going to be given the prices in baht and pounds because I'm from England but I'm also going to put the prices in euros, US dollars and Australian dollars so everybody that looks at my channel can get a rough idea how much it's going to cost. Now this first house here that we went to see was at Ban Chang and it's 2.9 million. So 2.9 million is £64,846 and again I'll put all the information with regard to euros, dollars etc etc. So with this house it was a brand new house on a, on a new development and we were offered to be able to buy this house. And the initial interview that we had with the lady over the phone with regard to wanting what deposit and how long and things like that. So I dare say we, we just got the basic information and you can maybe improve better on the deal if you have the cash and be able to do the deal there and then. Although we got offered to be able to take it over, if we signed for it that day, it was ours the following day. So the process was there and it was available. So they were asking for a down payment of 500,000 baht off a 2.9 million baht house. So that for the down payment of half a million baht works out at 11,180 pounds, 13,176 euros, 14,915 US dollars and 20,938 Australian dollars. That was a down payment and the term would have been over a 10 year period and the percentage annual percentage rate was 5% over the 10 year period. So the balance would have been after you put your initial deposit down of half a million baht which is 2.4 million which is 53,666 euros 63,245 US dollars 71,592 and Australian dollars 100,503 Australian dollars now this is to buy a 3 million almost 3 million baht house so this was over a period of 10 years now you can negotiate with the the company with regard to getting maybe a better deal or a lower interest rate but as we were just doing the initial investigations I don't think they give us their best offer that that was available but this is sort of what we negotiated to at the moment and it was a 10 year period and the interest rate was 5% a little bit more than the banks but then again I'm not in a perfect position to be able to buy a house because I'm 61 years old now this isn't irresponsible lending with regard to putting my wife into, into debt if I passed away during the period because I've got insurances and I've got a pension that my wife will always have until, until she passes over or whether she remarries again. So 
it isn't irresponsible lending. It is lending at a different way of looking upon it. It's because we're in a position where we can buy a house and I'll go on later with regard to why we made the decision to buy a house and not just carry on renting. Now a 10 year period of 5% at 2.4 million, that works out at 573 pounds per month, euros 675, US dollars 764, and Australian dollars 1,073 Australian dollars. So this is a monthly in Thai baht at 25,624 baht for a 10 year period. So to rent this standard of house on this estate would cost you in the regions of 20,000 baht per month anyway. So your rent of 25,624 is somewhere near what you'd be paying for rental income. So the rent for this period over a 10 year period at 20,000 baht a month works out at 2.4 million. So you've almost paid for the house itself at 3 million baht just for a rental period. So for me, it makes sense to spend that little bit extra, take precautions with regard to um, protecting yourself once you've purchased this house. There's many people who say you're gonna lose your house, but there are many methods where you can protect yourself so you don't lose the house. Although you will never ever own the land that it sits on, you can actually own the house. You can take precautions. So if you and your partner does split up, you don't lose everything. So my theory on this, or the way I'm thinking about this, is for example, for this house, you'd be paying 20,000 baht anyway to rent it. And you were with your partner for 10 years, that's 2.4 million you've just wasted and that could have gone towards buying a house. So when you curl your toes up and depart this world, then at least that's given something towards your partner to be able to secure her financial freedom for the rest of her life, as opposed to just giving it to the landlord or landlady over that period of time. Now, as I say, there's precautions that you can do with all of this lot, but the beauty of this is that if you pay outright three million for this house and you, you get divorced or you split up with your partner, it's going to be difficult. Although you can take precautions so you don't lose your money, these people who lose the money don't take these precautions. So it is already there. The system is already there to take precautions. But with this one, over the period of time, if you split up, say, five, six, seven years into the period, then you just walk away because it's not linked to you at all. It's linked to your Thai partner. So it's her that loses out if you split up and walk away. Now, I'm not saying to be irresponsible and enter into this agreement. For me, you've got to be fully committed with your partner to even think about doing this type of thing. Now, me and my partner, we've been together now for five years. I love her to bits. She's one of the best people I've ever, ever met. She can knock the spots off my three ex-wives, for sure. I'm in no doubt whatsoever what I'm doing with regard to buying a house. I want to make sure that she's financially comfortable once I curl my toes up and I depart this world. And then I know it's a good feeling inside that I've helped her along the way also. I've enjoyed the comfort of living in a, in a home that I do not own 100% and I keep saying this because I'll never own it 100% but when I curl my toes up I'm not going to own it anyway. So I'm just thinking the future of my wife and the future that she can be comfortable for the rest of her life. And it doesn't actually cost me much more to be able to do that. I have trust in my wife and my wife has 100% trust in me. And without that trust, I wouldn't even think about doing this. So for those people who don't trust their partners, don't even think about doing this.